This look, it's they've they've proven <laughs> there's not a connection, and this right. idiot is telling you to cut back the salt. So once I put this on my tongue, I'm just gonna chug water really quick. Watch like this. in randomized controlled feeding studies where they keep the rest of the diet the same and just add or take away salt and don't change anything else and they keep the diets the same, salt clearly raises blood pressure. And mm -hmm. we know from a range of studies that raising blood pressure raises stroke mm -hmm. uh, and, and causes heart disease. We know that to be true. Yeah. So, so, so those effects are, are convincing. Is salt bad for you? The discussion continues right now. What's up, y'all? It's Red Pill Vegan. Make sure to hit subscribe so you can see truth from fiction when it comes to what's on your plate. In this video, we're going to look at the type of information about salt being pushed by keto celebrity bodybuilder Jason Whitrock and compare that to the best available information we have coming from cardiologist Dr. Mozafarian, the dean of the Friedman School of Nutrition Science at Tufts University. We're going to trace this story pretty deep, so make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's start with Jason so you can see what kind of role social media influencers play in this diet debate. And one teaspoon of Redmond Real Salt. So I've covered the salt pre-workout trick before, but I'm going to cover it again. I take salt because it's a very good vasodilator. I like taking it right before my workout. As a matter of fact, when you work out, your body loses one teaspoon of salt every hour. So what I do is I just get ahead of that and I take a teaspoon before I work out. I really do notice a lot of performance benefits. Sodium is so underrated, guys. So once I put this on my tongue, I'm just gonna chug water really quick. Watch, like this. <laughs> My goodness. Now, a reasonable question would be, why would anyone want to eat a spoonful of salt? It's important to realize a couple things about what you just saw. First of all, a teaspoon of salt contains about 2.3 grams of sodium, which is essentially your entire recommended daily amount. Second, the keto diet has been shown to cause the kidneys to switch from retaining sodium to rapidly excreting it, and that's from Verta Health. Okay, let's shift our attention in this salt discussion over to Dr. Mozafarian. Before you cry out that vegans use biased sources of information, Dr. Mozafarian does in fact recommend a high-fat Mediterranean diet low in starch and sugar. He has found himself at the center of several diet controversies, including a 2014 meta-analysis about butter. He also served as the chair of the Global Burden of Disease Studies Nutrition and Chronic Diseases Expert Group. So let's hear his opinion on salt from this clip of him sitting down with functional medicine doctor Mark Hyman. Um, ten years ago, I was also kind of a salt skeptic. I really thought the data that was mixed and not that strong. And about ten years ago, I was asked to review all the evidence for how food and nutrition might affect chronic diseases um, for a series of projects, including working with the Global Burden of Diseases study, because they wanted to model and estimate what was going on in the world with diet and, and disease. And so I went and I looked with my research team and a lot of colleagues at multiple dietary factors one by one, and we systematically reviewed all the evidence. We did meta-analyses. We looked for um, concordance between experimental studies and observational studies and trials. Um, and when we did that for salt, I actually became a believer in the harms of, of salt. And mm. so while I never hold any belief as 100% yeah, yeah. yeah. accurate, I'm, if more data comes, I will change my mind. I mean, couldn't it be confounded by the fact that, you know, when you're looking at salt in populations and their consumption of it, that it, it's often associated with processed food that has other adverse effects? It's hard to sort of separate that out? Well, so, I mean, I... Because, yeah, you yeah. know, if those processed foods usually are, are starchy and they often drive in some resistance, which drives hypertension. So how do you sort that out? Well, so, you know, again, I think it's, it's important to, to look at all the evidence. And so I think if, again, I look at all the evidence right now, I, I think that high salt is harmful. And in randomized controlled feeding studies where they keep the rest of the diet the same and just add or take away salt and don't change anything else and they keep the diets the same, salt clearly raises blood pressure. And mm -hmm. we know from a range of studies that raising blood pressure raises stroke mm -hmm. and, and, and causes heart disease. We know that to be true. Yeah. So, 
So, so those effects are, are convincing. So to finish the, the story about salt, I, yeah. I think that everyone agrees and all the evidence is clear that if you get above a certain amount, it's harmful. Above 4,000 milligrams per day, let's say. Everybody agrees it's harmful. If you're still watching, give this video a thumbs up because people need to see this information. In fact, if you go back and look at the paper published by his research group, they examined 103 randomized trials which show a linear dose-response relationship between sodium intake and blood pressure. It even says in the paper that some researchers have argued that it may not be possible to directly extrapolate the effects of sodium on blood pressure to cardiovascular disease risk. However, the effect on cardiovascular disease is supported by extensive experimental and ecological evidence. Also, there's data on cardiovascular events from some of the trials of reduced sodium intake. And there's evidence of the cardiovascular benefits of blood pressure lowering across multiple interventions. Now, back to Jason Whitrock. Where is he getting his information from? Um, the scientist and researcher Gary Taubes, who um, I study extensively and he's an amazing resource. Gary Taubes. Gary Taubes. Gary Taubes. Gary Taubes. Gary Taubes has been writing about salt at least since 1998, and occasionally he revisits the topic. This guy makes absurd claims, like, None of the research since 1972 supports the current salt recommendations and the CDC and the NIH are relying on the results of a single 30-day trial from 2001. Huh? Don't get cucked by mainstream media and social media influencers into eating fad diets that require spoonfuls of salt. I want to hear y'all's opinion in the comments section about the misinformation surrounding salt and what the general public can do to overcome this nonsense. If you haven't already, Subscribe so you can find out why I eat a diet based around whole plant foods, including fruits, vegetables, beans, grains, potatoes, and more. No spoonfuls of salt required. Red Pill Vegan, next.